Good morning, good morning. We have the privilege of hearing the word of God again. Isn't, isn't that exciting? I want you to imagine today, Jesus just walking and standing right in front of you and just having a conversation with you and just talking to you. Because that's what I believe is going to happen today. Yeah? So, we have the privilege of having a favorite girl of mine, Marisol Soto. Let's welcome Marisol coming up. She's been in his presence, praying and seeking the Lord. And I believe the Lord has breathed in her his breath. And she's going to breathe his breath into us, our lungs. So, it is just so amazing. Marisol, I appreciate your hunger, your passion. The way you love the Lord is just absolutely amazing. Just come and feed us and pour his, his breath onto us. Yeah. So awesome. So, so, so awesome. Good morning, family. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Uh, I am so joyful to be here. To just, I wanna, I wanna first honor Mama and Papa. You know, they graduated. They don't know it, but they have graduated in my heart. They have graduated in my household. And they have graduated in the kingdom, which is most importantly. I want to thank them for just their trust in me. They're pouring out to me. I promise not to cry, but I can't make that promise. That would be false. But I just want to honor them because they pour out so much. And their love, the, the love to me comes, comes more than just from a place of pastoring, but friendship. Because I've learned to open myself to you and trust you. And you've never failed me every single time. Especially when I've been wrong. <laughs> and you can imagine us quite often. <laughs> so I want to, I want to open up with prayer and, and, you know, I want to thank you all for being here. You know, as I was in the prayer room today, Renee says, girl, you don't have to worry. It's just us. You don't have to worry. You don't have to be nervous. And what I feel is that just us is everything. You're a family. You are everything. And I want to thank you for your heart, Renee, because it encourages me. But I just want to make that statement that you guys are everything to me. Today, I don't really have nerves. I've done this before. Today is different. And I'm going to take you into prayer, and then I'm going to share, because I don't want to take too much time. So, Father God, you are so good. You are so good. Lord, we love your presence. Holy Spirit, you are here. Jesus, you are right in front of us. And Lord, I pray that today would be a new day, a fresh day, a day of new beginnings. Lord, I pray, starting with our pastors and every every family member, including my own, my husband and my son, that we and everyone on Zoom that cannot be here yet, which I'm, you know, I put that yet a disclaimer. But I pray that they will be encouraged. I pray, God, that that you would take them on a journey of their own lives, as I share today. I pray that you would do what only your spirit can do. I yield my will to you. And I pray that the ears will be open or fresh to the sounds of heaven. Lord, I thank you because I sense right now that we're not alone. Heaven is here. The angels are here. And Jesus himself is here. Know that. We bless you in Jesus' name. I pray. Amen. 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 Can we play a little song? It sounds so quiet in here that it's just kind of like, oof. Oh, okay. Well, 
you know, last week I wasn't here. By the way, I want to start with a little joke, which is not really a joke, but do you know what month it is? <laughs> it's July. And by the grace of God, I get it in in my month that I'm here sharing with you guys. Isn't God awesome? God is amazing. I mean, he's amazing. You know, I got to brag on him. But Jolly July is what I've ad- ad- adopted in my life for the past. I'm sorry. I just saw the whole room full of people. To you be the glory, Lord. Um, for the past couple of years. And there's a story to that. If you think I'm a little bit much, you know, call me. We'll talk about it. All right. I'll share the story behind that. It, it wasn't birth for any reason. But today, last week, family were, were here. I traveled and I missed, I was here last Sunday and Mama Kayla was speaking and kind of her message kind of, I was praying to the Lord, Lord, you know, what do you want to say? I kid you not. There's so many things I can talk about today, but, um, I, that I knew there was a specific thing. And as soon as, as, as soon as I heard Mama Kayla, I knew that, um, I knew what it was. And it's birthed from what she was saying. And I wasn't able to hear the whole message because I had my lovely, beautiful grandchildren and I took them in. I, I watched them so that my family can receive and they receive mightily. And I'm so grateful for that. But one of the things that she said was, um, remember, right? She was talking about you remembering, you know, where you've been. So that's kind of where this message has birthed. And the title of my message, I have a lot of notes. I know I won't go through them. But the title of my message is The Power of Process. And you can personalize that, the power of your process. I love you, my love. Um, I want to share with you guys, because many of you, know me personally and some of you you know we haven't had that time to kind of like know the whole story there's a whole story behind my madness in all of this right <laughs> um i know i could be quite much uh, be quite much of sometimes and i i give glory to my pastors for dealing with me and my husband and my family <laughs> but um so I just want to share really quick some timelines. I know I've shared before, but I want to go a little deep so you can really know. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I want to, I want, I feel that the Lord said to me, it's not only for me to share where I've been, because this week, as I sat with the Lord, he poured, he started pouring out things that I kind of didn't remember. And one of the things that he poured out is it's, it's, my progress, right? I've always been that kind of person that nothing happens too fast. It's like, can we get this going? And in my journey with the Lord, guess what he's done to me? He's put really turtles everywhere, (laughs) to say the least, right? Like the process for me has always felt slow. So I take you back to 2003. I was 33. This is the first time um, that I, around 30, I feel like something, I needed something in my life. At this point, I already had, I was divorced twice. I want to, I want to really put that in there and put a pin on it. But I was divorced twice. I was 33 and I felt something. At that point, I didn't know what it was. So I used, I was that Christian that Pastor um, Andre talks about. The only goes to church on, on Easter. That was me for many years. And I, and I used to go, but something happened, and I, I decided, well, you know what, I'm going to see. I ended up at the Catholic Church. I ended up doing my training. I got baptized at 33. It's a very important year, uh, number for me. If you guys don't know, the Lord speaks to me through numbers. That was the first time that I encountered the Holy Spirit, the presence of the Holy Spirit. I didn't know what it was. But the Lord gripped my heart in a church full of people and I cried and I cried and I cried. That was my first encounter. Didn't know it then. Later, I want to remind you that I lived in Pennsylvania in Harrisburg. From the age of 30 to 37, here's what I tell you that I can remember um, things 
where I was. I was a very responsible person, a loyal person. I was very committed. I was caring and hardworking. Somehow I started, and I, and I somehow I knew the fear of the Lord. Not to the level that I, but somehow the fear of the Lord has always been on me. I think it's just a, a grace um, that was on my life. I, I had the fear of the Lord. But I'll tell you, kind of like the not so good. I had two failed marriages, right? I had shame. I had regret. I had hurt. I had abandonment. I had issues of the abandoned spirit. I learned how to get through life by manipulating situations, manipulating people. I think I was a master in manipulation. I, I, I really think I was. And, and that was just the nature that I adopted because I think in my, the mechanism of, of survival, you learn to do those things. So I learned that. I was insecure. I had insecurity issues, confident issues, and all the issues that you can add after that. Right? All those issues. I tell you what I was not. I didn't think I was gifted. I didn't think I was brilliant. I didn't think I was intellectual. I didn't think I was talented. I I, I didn't think I would ever be successful. And you can add everything else to that. According to the standards of the world, that is. Right? I'll make that disclaimer. Going through my process, um, here comes 2007, I'm 37 years old, and this is when I meet my prince over there, Mr. Jose. I meet him, and um, I move to South Florida. At age, well, I meet him at age 39, then I moved to South Florida in 2009. And here I, I this is when I came, there was... What I want you guys to do so that you can come to my journey, I'm really trusting the Holy Spirit to, to kind of like help you fill in the process. But what I want you to do is to really imagine, not my story, your story, your journey, your process. I want you to really take yourself to your process as I share with you. And there's a reason for that. So, Jose, when I first got here, um, I came with my son and I told him, hey, I, I really want to go to a church. So he took me to his church, the one that he used to go every once in a while. But that changed because then we started going completely. Something happened in the church that gripped my heart every single week. Every single week. I didn't know what that was. What I started to think that something was wrong with me because every single week I was crying. Every single week, I felt like the past, everything was back down. The pastor was talking directly to me. Well, the, the Lord was doing a work in my heart, and that was, and that was great for, for, you know, in that point and period of my life. That was my process. I was there seven years. Um, in those seven years, I was in a relationship with Jose. Mind you, the Lord started convicting my heart. He started convicting my heart about living with Jose and not being married with Jose. That didn't feel too good. You just imagine what that feels like. Every single week, I was I felt this thing in my heart. But what I didn't want to admit was the fact that I was living in sin, right? <laughs> I I kind of like, hey, I, that was kind of like, this is what it is, right? It, this, everybody does this. This is a culture. But the Lord wasn't having it. But I didn't understand why. And then I remember Jose and I got into some some situations, you know, just trying to navigate all that. Well, moving forward, 2011, this is already 2009, 10, we're going through our process. We decide, you know, that we are going to buy a house, right? You would think the Christian thing to do is to get married. Just saying, that would be a good advice, right? Uh, but that's not what happened. Um, we we bought a house, and how many of you know that when you're out of the will of God, things get tough, right? Because God's not going to bless something that goes against His will. And I can say that today, not not for any condemnation to anyone. I know no one on Zoom. No, no one is here or, 
But, but that's the truth. That's my truth. I knew I started to get burning for the Lord. So I started to put the pressure on the man. And Jose um, showed me love, but he, there was a lot of pain because, it, you know, some issues that they weren't resolved in his life. So I felt always like I wasn't loved enough, like he wouldn't give me his whole heart. So I was going, you know, I was going after his heart. Eventually, I went. Right, 2000. I, you guys fill in the blank. All the drama they went through, all that, because it was a lot. But I don't. I want to save you the trouble. But in 2013, dun dun dun, Jose and I, I say yes, and he says yes. We get married. But before 2009, 2011 was a big, 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 big time in my life. Two years after coming here, there was a crisis, a big crisis. My son, I think he was about 14 years old, and I had a stroke. I had, it was caused by an aneurysm. It was caused by stress. I didn't realize all the stress that I had in my life because of that whole situation of moving and a new place, no family, all I had was myself, a new relationship, all of that. I was trying to navigate all that, and, and I was, you know, I took my, it happened. Um. I went into a glorious process. My glorious process was the first vision that I had. And in that first vision, this is not the beginning of my message, but in that first vision, it's important to say, the Lord showed me something. He showed me a vision. He showed me in this huge, I thought I was dying. Right? I, I really thought that I was dying, and I was seeking the Lord. And, and I said, Lord, this is it. I remember being in the hospital. And the chaos and the fear of, of Jose and my children and my family. Feeling that emotion yourself, what is that like? I lay there and I asked the Lord literally a question in my consciousness. Is this is it? The Lord said to me, he took me through like a tunnel because it was really dark. And in that tunnel at the end, I saw a light, right? I saw a light and I said, wait a minute. So in that light, he opened me to a vision. I was in a stadium. It was a football stadium. The stadium was filled with thousands and thousands of seats. There was lights. The lights were off. There was a stage. So I said, what is, I was standing there next to the stage. And I said, look, what is this? He said, you see all those lights you are going to lie. You are going to be the the one that lights up the stadium," he said to me in the vision. And I got, you know, I woke up from the dream and hissed when the fart the fart buzz begins because you know what I thought that meant? That meant that I was going to be Joyce Myers immediately because. Before that, I was in the in a point that one of the things that I really needed to that was missing in my life is that I didn't know my purpose. I was frustrated. I was in a new relationship. I had just moved from a different state. I was frustrated, and then I got to know the Lord. I started to be hungry. Something awoken in me, kinda, and I was. I just wanted to know what was my reason to be here, right? So that didn't happen, by the way. I didn't become just smartest. <laughs> All right. So here's the part where I really want to focus, and this is. 2006, July, oh, 2016. The ending of July of 2016, five years ago. Do you think it's by accident that I'm sharing today? Five years ago, the last week of 2016, I was eruptively, like, taking from one church and I landed at Rivergate Church, which is the church of Pastor Andre and Pastor Kayla. You can't make that up. However, let me just show you a, a testimony. When I went there, my life, what they inherited, because I want to remind, I want to, I just want to make some points here. What they inherited was a hot mess because 
the day that I left to go to their church, I wasn't in the church by myself. My husband was with me. We were going through some real tough times. I left the church. I also left my husband at the church. I'm not proud of that, but it's a true story. I left because the spirit, the spirit of God, which I didn't even know was the spirit of God then. I didn't know it was through the spirit. I didn't know any of that. Um, said to me, today is the day. And I got in my car and I ended up at their church. Why? Because there was this one lady that was, was in our church, which happens to be also the one lady that Pastor Kayla years ago went to a revival meeting. Can't make that up. But it's true. She came into my life also and, um, you know, she was, a, she was, she made a pit stop in her life in their church and I ended up, she told me about the church and I ended up being there. And I also took a friend. So I get there, I never told my husband and of course, that wasn't right to do, right? So that formed some issues. And I want to read some of the conditions. I came to Encounters Church. Um, I remember, remember, and when I keep saying that, remember my process. I remember walking into the church. And I, I kid you not, when I walk into the church, all I felt was the living presence of God. And I had no words for it. I had no grit for that. I had no grit for that. And I had been in a church for seven years. Did I ever feel the presence of God before? Yes. But I, what I, what I can identify with in that church, and I'm never going to say the name of the church, but what I, I can identify was condemnation was really heavy on me on the other church. When I came to this church, love was present. That was the difference. So I want to point that out. So I came with my baggage to Rivergate Church. Yay! First baggage, my marriage was in turmoil, big time, to the point where separation happened, and I put up the house for sale. You fill in the blanks, how that would look. But God said to me, John 10.10, Thief came, right? But I, I don't focus on that part. I focus on the part that I came, that you may have life and have it more abundantly. So my life didn't feel like that. I was like, really? Okay. I, I hung on to that. Second, my son was walking in a little bit of rebellion. What does rebellion mean? Just resisting, you know, going through his process. And um, that was a tough time. But God said to me, Joshua twenty four fifteen, as for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. And I, of course, added to that. And I said, we shall serve the Lord. We shall walk with the Lord. We shall know the Lord. And I added many, many, many other things to that, right? So after that, he said to me, Marriage, son, then I got the news of my mom, and this was the diagnosis, four-stage cancer. It all happened in the same time, um, and the Lord said to me, you know, be strong and courageous, right? Do not dismay, and, and I... And I and I hung on to that promise. I walked that out. And this time, I came into the church, and I want to go back to that. I came into the church, and that day I felt the presence like I never felt it before. The next day, Jose came. The next Sunday, Jose came. He surprised me there. In between that week, filling the blanks, right? Imagine the just the conflict and the disagreement, and I was wrong, and all those things, okay? But tough, 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 tough times. I came back to Rivergate, and by the grace of God, and I'm so thankful, he came, and he was sitting there. I remember that day. 
looking at his face and his eyes, and I was dumbfounded because in that time, I was done. I thought I was done with my marriage. I felt out of love. I thought I fell out of love. But then I walk into love, which is the church. And something happened. And then when I say I fell out of love, it wasn't true. It was a lie that I was believing. I never fell out of love. How can I fall out of love with my husband? No. But that was the lie that I was believing. And today I want to encourage you and I want to ask you, what lie are you believing? You know? What lie are you believing about your process? So. Ah, okay. So I felt like there, when when I found the church, I felt like the Lord. I was like, you know, the Lord had took me, so you understand. My marriage was in, a, in not a good place. Situations with my my family, my son, my mom. The Lord says, hey, I'm going to move you from one church to the other. Just like that. Okay. So my support group that I had, even before I left, and I'll say this because we I want you all to know what wealth we have here in this church. I was in a big church, over 10,000, 12,000, I don't know how. And I, I was committed to that church. Okay? I served, Jose and I served every day, every Sunday. Jose and I participated. Jose and I served. Jose and I tied and all that. But when my storm came, I was alone. You know? I didn't have a support group. Or I didn't have, when I went seeking, I didn't have it. So the Lord, that day, and I was, even that, that week before coming, I, I reached out to one of the pastors and I was kind of like shut down and I ended up at the church, thank God. But I was so hurt because you're feeling so hurt, right? Your life is upside down and you're like, I'm going to my pastor. So I have pastors. I've been here in this house. and But I didn't get the response that I needed at that time. How many times have you felt like you're alone, even at the church? Today, that will change. You will never feel that way. And I, I don't suspect that we do, but just in case you do in any different area of your life, I want to invite you to know that we are here for you. All right? Maybe it's just you allowing yourself to come. All right? And opening yourself because it takes that, right? It takes that action. So the Lord gave me Luke 630 and it says, give me Give and it will be given up to you. And this, the last thing that happened in that, because, you know, my mom was passing, you know, passing and all that. And I was traveling back and forth and, you know, that I was still going to the church, filling the blank, her being in Pennsylvania, me being here, all that stress, all the household, my son, all of that, plus the church. Then the finances, you know, the finances was a really big situation as well. I come to Encounters Church. And, you know, he, the presence of God's love immediately started to activate things. Jose came after he came. Like three weeks in between that, Pastor K that preaches the message of love. That message of love was an encounter for me. Encounters like I've never had before. It, it, she talked about the chambers of love. Guess what happened there? I got really hungry, really hungry, because I was I was needing that love. I was needing. I, I felt depleted, and now, so my process has been um, long. Between that, it's been really long. But the Lord has given me a promise, and He gave me. If you want to know. Oh, like who I, what I stand, what scriptures. I want to share a couple of scriptures with you that identify who I am. Isaiah 60, 1 through 5, the whole Isaiah. If you look at my Bible, it's completely highlighted, but I mean, 
Mart, oak, date, all, all kinds, because I've been there so many times. So, but I want to read Isaiah 60, 1 through 5, and I want you to listen to it for yourself with a new, fresh ears. I feel like the Lord is going to really speak to you. He said to me, he's saying to you, arise. He's saying to you, arise from spiritual depression to a new life. Shine. Be radiant with glory and brilliance of the Lord. For your light has come and the glory... And the brilliance of the Lord has risen upon you. Hallelujah. For in fact, darkness will cover the earth. And deep darkness. How many of you know that there's darkness in the earth right now? Right? Darkness will cover the earth and deep darkness the people. But the Lord will rise upon you. And the glory and the brilliance will be seen upon you. Nations will come to your light and kings to your brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes around and see. They all gather together to come to you. For you son, for your sons will come from afar and your daughters will be looked after their side. Isn't that an awesome promise? Man, he gives me that promise, and I'm like, whoa, but my life doesn't look quite like that. So I decide, okay, I'm going to walk this. So then he gives me Isaiah 61. I'm already in Encounters Church. The first week that I, the first week that I came there, what was the first thing that I did? But well, hold on on that. I'll share with that in a minute. Then he gave me Isaiah 61. At this point, I was already in Encounters Church. This was purpose. Purpose. And this purpose was partner with what I was coming into with the, with the family, with the church, right? In Isaiah 61, it says, the spirit of the living God is upon me. So you see how I was arising first? And then he declares on me, hey, the spirit of the, God, uh, the living God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. And commission me to bring good news to, to the humble and the afflicted. To the humble and the afflicted. He has sent me to bind up the wounds of the brokenhearted. To proclaim and release from, sorry, I can't see this. From confinement and condemnation, from imprisonment pretty much, to the physical and the spiritual captives and set them free right freedom and i'm not going to read the rest but that's where he took me those are my promises right then he takes me to jeremiah 1 5 through 10 this is where he says hey i have given you um a voice right when i didn't feel like i had a voice he gave me a voice then He takes me to Psalms. Well, let me tell you a little bit about my process at Encounters Church because this is what I really want to um, focus on. When I came to Encounters Church, I experienced the love of God immediately. The next week, Jose was there. The following, I remember this, like the Lord reminded me this whole week. The third week, I ended up in the kitchen. Nobody invited me there. I had no business to be there, but I came to serve. I came to give. In those two first weeks that I was there, God was there. And because God was there, I didn't know Pastor Kale and Pastor Andre very much. I didn't know Thelma. I didn't know anybody. But God was there. And that, for me, was what I was missing. So guess what I did? I responded. I responded. I ended up in the kitchen. I remember Pastor Kayla saying, um, are you okay? She thought I was lost. And I said, no, I'm, I'm here to serve. So she said, oh, okay. So she takes me, and then she tells me where I can serve. She ended, I, she ended up giving me charge over setting up the front. I don't know if you guys remember 
Sheridan, but we used to set up the front, so I ended up serving. And then after I was doing that, I was like, back in her face, so what else can I do? She's like, well, what can you do? And I said, well, I, I came from the church, and I used to be with the kids. I used to lead the kids at the other church. I led for many years. And she said, well, that's great. I'll put, you know, we'll put you there to serve there. Awesome. So I started serving. Why do I say that? Because that was part of my process. I jumped in. Walking with the Lord looks like something. And this is not about, this is not about um, works. In my process, the first thing that I recognized when I was in Canada's church was that I didn't know who I was. I had problems with my identity. And all of that in my process, pat them pastoring me, I was able to um, come out of that, right? So this is what they inherited. It wasn't that a good inheritance for the pastors, all my big mess. And they still want me around? Why? Oh, I don't know. Um, then I'm going to give you a little bit of a process of what happened in Encounters Church. First thing I did was serve. Kids ministry. I started um, serving in the front, setting up and setting down. I was getting there early. Every single week. No one asked me. I just did it. Why? Why did that happen? Because I was hungry. And hunger looks like something. It looks like something. The same way success looks like something. Right? It looks like something. Somehow... In December, <laughs> somewhere at the end of that December in 2016, guess what I ended? I ended up being invited to the Christmas leaders meeting. And this is what my pastor said. Marisol and Jose are here by default. Pretty much what that means was because she's been around, she's available, right? <laughs> by accident. I was there by accident. I had no reason to be there, but because I was always around, I was invited by the grace of God. You remember that? And um, <laughs> then after that, um, what I didn't know like then was that, that the Lord strategically placed me in Rivergate Church when they were just, it wasn't so long ago that they, kind of obtained and, you know, got the, the church themselves. They started to establish departments at the church. So the first, after that, the first department that was born um, was the healing ministry department, and and they wanted us to do an outreach, right? And one of the healing uh, department was to go to the hospital and pray for the sick, you guys forgot about that, right? Jesus reminded me yesterday. And I was so excited. I never healed anybody, but I was excited. Guess who volunteered? Me. Get, guess, yeah, Delma was, Delma was there to, Delma was there to, Delma was being definitely part of my journey. But I, I said, hey, I want to do this. And I jumped in. So I was actually the first department of the healing department. I forgot about that. I pray for the sick. I didn't cast out demons yet, but I pray for the sick. And it was incredible because <laughs> I, rem- I remember my faith level for healing was non-existent, really. I just thought if I pray, I get healed. But I saw so many miracles happen. I mean, p- and and what I've started to notice is that I carry something, even though I didn't understand what that was. Even getting in the room, like, it was like the room lit up. So I did that, right? That was that was one of my process. The second, um, so that department was, was established. The other department that was established was that they wanted to do city groups, right? 
Um, and I remember, I'm not sure if they remember, but I remember that we had a, we had a, a, a member, her name was Sylvia, a sweet lady. She was with us and, um, she, she was one of the mature leaders, right? So she kind of like took on to want to, to want to do the city group, but she didn't have a place to host it. Guess what? I said, I want to, I want, how about if they use my up house, right? And my dear husband, I'll tell you, bless his heart. Bless his heart. And there came the yes. Take notice of all the yeses throughout my process. I said yes. We opened up a city group in um, 2000. When was that? 2017. Yeah. 2000, yeah, 2017. If you see, that's only like a year later, right? But for me, it was taking forever. Being in the process, this is why I want to encourage you because when you're in the process, it feels like eternity. It feels like when is this going to happen? You know, I don't see nothing happening. I didn't see any of this happening until I said with the Lord this week. Like, I didn't see it happening. Okay. He had to point it out to me. Help me, Jesus. Okay. That was the first thing. So the first thing is to serve, right? That's what I did, and that was my process. Out of serving, two departments were born. So uh, the the ministry for the, the hospital and also the city group. Six months six months into it, guess what happens? Sylvia leaves the church. Again, while by default, I wasn't chosen. I wasn't the chosen one. I wasn't the most qualified. As a matter of fact, I was not at all. She left, and it was like, okay, I guess tag I'm it, like my pastor says. I was it. My nerves. I no one taught me how to prepare. No, I, no one taught me anything. I barely knew the Holy Spirit, so I couldn't really count on him either because I didn't know him. I'm being honest. I couldn't count on him. He was always with me. But if you don't know it, then what what use is it, does it happen? Right? I didn't know. So my knees every year, every week, would shake. Right? So that's my truth in 2017. But that's the third thing that happened in 2017. A lot of conferences were born. Pastor Kayla was on fire. I'll tell you one, one little, if, if you don't ask me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share with you. One of the things that really helped me grow was that I kept my eyes on the fire. I kept my eyes on the fire. I could not, so whoever carried the fire, I was really close to them. I was like, I was by the fire, you know. I didn't want that coldness anymore. So anyway, that's bad. So here's what happened in 2000, in 2017. In in 2017, the conference, it changed my life. We went to the, Pastor Kayla came with her, her great idea. In August of 2017, that there was a Heidi Baker conference, and it was called the Love Conference. But here's the problem. The problem with that conference was that that, pro- that conference was the same weekend as my grandson's birthday. I made a vow, a, a, a vow that I would, my, when my grandkids moved from, Pennsylvania, from Florida to South Carolina, that I wasn't going to miss a birthday. And I had to make a decision. And it was not an easy decision. I had been to my first grandson's birthday in February. And I had to tell my, like, I was, I was struggling. But I, I knew I was so hungry. And I knew inside of me that I wanted to go. But there was another side, right, my grandchildren. So I made the decision. And I say, I'm going to go. And I am so grateful that I did because that conference changed my life. That conference changed a lot of us lives. 
once when when that conference happened, I was delivered, I was healed, I encountered God in ways in so many powerful ways that um changed my life, right He renewed me, and more hunger came into place, but there was a sacrifice saying no to your grandchildren and skipping on things for your family. That's a sacrifice. Serving, committing to growth. That was my commitment to growth. I had to say no to something else. Right? 2018. That wasn't easy, by the way. I don't want to, it was really hard for me, but I, I did it. And it was amazing. That's when Kayla and Thelma and I were completely, uh, encounter so powerfully. I walked into that conference and all I see is dead bodies everywhere. At this point, thank God, I know a little bit about the Holy Spirit, right? I'm familiar with the Holy Spirit quite a little bit more. And I see people laid out everywhere. And I think there was like 10,000 people there. I don't know. Maybe. Very close to it. They were laid out everywhere. I'm like, oh my God, what's going on? There were people laying everywhere. So I said, okay. Kayla takes me and says, we're going to receive she's on fire. So then I get on fire and I take Thelma. And that's a, that's a whole different, uh, sharing, but we all get on fire and so many wonderful things happen there. 2018, we continue to have encounters with the Lord. The power of God increases upon us. This is after the conference. We, I do my first um, fire tunnel. I didn't know what a fire tunnel was. Guess what happens in fire, in fire tunnels? You get fired up. That's exactly what happened to me. So we do that. Then at this point, at this point, our finances are not looking good still. So I'm, I'm going through my process in, you know, with, with the Lord. I'm also still dealing with my process at home and finances. And at this point, I'm telling Jose, listen, we, we, I want to move to South Carolina because the, everything is shutting down here. The only thing I really have is a church. That was my thinking. The only thing I have is a church. Like it was something small. I'm being very candid because it's true. That's, I'm like, the only thing I, ha- I don't really have family here. The only one I have is Jose. And the girls, but my kids weren't here, and I just felt lonely, and it was just a struggle, and there was so much pain, and nothing was happening, and I wasn't growing, and I felt like everything, I was a mess. So, but I continue to have encounters and encounters, church, to counter the Lord. The power of God continued to increase upon me. Our finances were still bad, but we stay committed to give. To the church, we I stay committed to do the city group every week. I, I mean, every month I would prepare twice a month, and I still stay there. I prepare the message twice a month, and I still, but I still consider to go to South to, to South Florida. Now comes 2019. 2019 is when we had the opportunity to have the women's conference. Wow, I was so excited. I remember that the moms were there, and they were all excited and making everything pretty and. And I was so excited. And Pastor Kayla just said, hey, you know, do you want to? I had a dream. And I was like, forget it. That dream was about Paris. And I got caught up in Paris. And I got caught up with the shiny things. And I got caught up with being on the platform and the accolades and all. And, you know, I'm going to have my Joyce Myers moment. Right? Because I deserve it. I mean, do you see? you start seeing all the stuff I was doing? Come on. So this is when the testing comes. Mike, hmm. I invite my friends. I invited everybody that I could invite. Oh, I didn't want no one to miss it. That I was going to be, you know, with the mic. So I invite them. I invite my family. I invite everybody. But guess what happens? I get distracted. The main thing kind of didn't wasn't the main thing anymore for a short period of time. And I had to make... I. I I was excited when I came to preach my message about, at this point, I was really encountering the presence of God, and that was truly, you know, I was already doing healings. I was 
praying for people that were getting filled with the spirit. I was already having breakthrough in my city groups. I, I mean, stuff was happening, right? So I'm just getting all puffed up. Yeah. Puffed up, as you say. I was puffed up. So excited. So when the, when that conference comes, the, 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 and I get the microphone and I start sharing, guess what happens? I show up by myself. The Holy Spirit doesn't show up. And maybe you guys don't know that. That started the testing time. The Lord started to deal with me in the motives of my heart. And he takes me to, to Psalms 51, 10, you know? He wants a pure heart. He wants to start to, um, prune some things. He wants to start to, um, cleanse me of some things. And then very sweetly, I remember that I coming, getting down out of that. And I was the first one to go on. <laughs> Mercy. And I had to sit in the first one. I had to sit through every speaker after I spoke. Can you imagine what that feels like? It was so painful. I was like, because I, I bombed it. I bombed it so bad. I don't even know what I said. I knew I bombed it because I knew the spirit of God wasn't with me. I was so, what happened really was that I got distracted, you know, with how pretty this was going to be, who was going to be there, how I was going to look, da 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 da, fill in the blanks, right? So I lost, I lost focus. And the Lord quickly reminded me, <laughs> to say the least. So anyway, but when he reminded me, here's what I tell you about the Lord. He is, he is sovereign. He's loving. He never forced me. He showed me two paths, two ways to go. The ways of the shining looking things, the success, the, the, the accolades, the, you know, the being famous, the being wanted, the, the having, you know, all that, all that. Or he showed me the humble way. Jesus in the center. But at the same time, what I didn't know, that something was happening also in my pastor's hearts too. They were going through their season. And actually, we were going through seasons together, and I didn't know that until now that I look back, and I'm like, wow, we were really going through seasons together to prepare ourselves for today, right? So anyway, the Lord starts dealing with my heart. I got down out of that, that, that service, and I said to everybody, everyone's son is so beautiful, and I just was like, it was such a mess. Okay. But when ministry time came, the Lord's grace was still on me. So when I ministered to people, the power of God was released. Tamara, who attends my, our city group every once in a while, she was a beneficiary of that. The Lord touched her mightily. And I was like, oh, what, what just happened? You know, she fell and the power came and I was like, and that encouraged me. And I was like, oh my God, thank you. Because I feel like people who are not going to receive because I blew it, right? Like I blew it so badly. Um, but no, the Lord showed up. He is, he is faithful. <laughs> he is faithful. So Psalms 51, 10 and 11 says, create in me a clean heart, oh God, and renew the right steadfast spirit within me. 11, do not take away your presence from me and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. I was in this for about eight months. The Lord was pruned. And there I cried and I prayed and I, and I, I, I was, I mean, I was groaning because it was so painful because I had to deal with a lot of my junk and a lot of my mess and a lot of my whys and a lot of the real reason why I wanted the pulpit, the real reason why I wanted to preach. So the Lord dealt with me, and it was not a fun process at all, to say the least. Then 2019, at the end of 2019, I meet somebody that I love. Her name is Nana Kaler. Nana Kayla comes into my life, and she happens to be the grand, the, the parents of my pastors who now are my parents, right? That makes sense. So I get to meet her. She was missing from the equation, 
the equation in my life wasn't complete. So I, I meet her and Mike. Uh, I kind of like something happened with Mike that I was a little bit like, okay, for anyway, Nana. She touches me. She prays for me. Power of God comes. I have an amazing encounter. She prophesies over me. I receive an impartation. I receive prophetic words. I was blessed tremendously. In the midst of all of this, I'm still going through my Monday through Sunday process, which is the city groups, my household, my family, my family, everything, nothing stops. All that's still going, right? Still going. So I meet her. That was amazing. What happened with Kate, um, um, Nana came was that the Lord kept dealing with my heart. And I thought he was done. No, this is the end now of 2019. I go into this thing that there was like a holy um, anger. Like I was angry. And oh, and I didn't know what to do. The, I went into Job. <laughs> the Lord took me to Job. And I was in Job. And if you know, the, and this is the Old Testament, by the way. But I was in Job and I understood it like now. I was like, oh, my God all these sinful people and they you know i was just so angry at the world and i could not believe the stuff that i was thinking about people you know but the lord revealed that to me and i went through that process because he was dealing with my heart and he gave me an invitation to and i remember like today i called pastor karen i said you know I, 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 I gotta tell you, you, like, what I really wanted to say was this. I gotta tell you, you guys gotta ramp up your messages because you're just too sweet with this thing with love and grace. And I just had enough. That's what I wanted to tell her. Because the grace message is being abused. And the grace message, you know what? I, it's kinda like, I'm over it. Right? Let's bring the condemnation. Let's bring the fire. Let's bring all of that. And I was just so like, come on. These people like, really? Like, like how long is it going to take them? Like, how much do we have to invest? Like, how much do we have to do? Uh, And I just went off and I was so, and then the wisdom of God comes and one, one talk with, with Mama Killer, she says, you know, she laughs. <laughs> you know, a little laugh. Like, just giggle. You know, when your child is going through something and, and she just giggles. And, uh, and I'm like, why is she giggling? Uh, that. Anyway, she says to me, she encourages me. And she says, you know, the love of God, you know, sometimes it's hard to understand. And you're going through something, right? She encourages me. And I, she helps me through that, through that process. It was really hard. Because if you looked at me, I want to condemn you. I don't care who you were. You know? And, and it was tough. It was really tough. Um, but I got through that. And let me tell you the fruit of that. The fruit of that is, the point of that is that the Lord, now I know why the Lord did that. The Lord was showing me that he was taking me into the deeper loves of his chambers. Because I will deal with, with that in the world. People who are not walking like me. People who don't look like me. So the Lord was inviting me and trusting me. Do you want my eyes to see them the way I see them? Do you want to love them for the right reasons? Do you want them to be delivered? Do you want them to be set free? Do you want them to know me? How is that going to happen if you're looking like this? you got to represent me, right? But wait, I see all this and you have wrath. And I fought. I could be stubborn. You can ask my husband. He would testify to that. And maybe my son too. I was very stubborn. And I fought with the Lord. Anyway. Here comes, I get into that. I bow. I I didn't bow. I didn't bow. I didn't bow. But I, after I came out of that, wait, I remember. But there was one more thing that came. Then came, what was his name? His name was um, Oates. Gary Oates came. Okay. At this point, I'm just like fired up. G- Gary Oates comes. He's invited. The pastors invite them. And I think it's so strategic. Even Sometimes I don't even, I don't even think they appreciate how strategic they are being in the kingdom because it's led by God. But he comes, and he, this is the guy that walks 
that has had experience with angels in Brazil and, you know, um, he, he, his eyes will open to see angels and the miraculous and all this and all that. And I'm like, oh, I need that. So I go into the service and still I have that thing. I'm going through that testing, right? Of the wrath. So I'm like, I came into that service like I was going to tell him what to say or I was going to tell him like I was going to demonstrate him that he was wrong and I was right in my own head. Right. So I walk into the service and I was like, I'm not going to receive any. When I walked into the service, the, the presence of God, the angels were there. I didn't know it in that moment, but the angels with the atmosphere was so filled with the angels. And maybe he maybe um, when he what he was preaching about. I, the Lord had me in those scriptures like a couple of weeks before. So I was like, really? Like, I've already read that. Like, I'm serious. This was my attitude. I already read that. Like, is that all he has? Like, come on. I, I, I've heard I, at that point I was listening to TJ Jakes and a powerful message. I want a powerful message where, you know, you, you know, I, that's what I wanted because that was just too soft and nothing. This is me in my head. I never told him, of course. But this is my head. And as I was sitting there, the presence of God started to get heavy on me. Heavy on me. And heavy on me. You know? And I'm like, I had to leave to the bathroom. I go to the bathroom to fight with the Lord. I had a fight. I went to. The, I invited my friend Lena and her daughter. I went to the bathroom. I had a fight with God. Have you ever, have, have you ever had a fight with God? Have you? I want to see your hand. Is that only me? I fight with, oh, I had a big one, a big one. We had it out. I went to the bathroom and I was telling him all these things. And he was laughing at me. He, he listened to me. And I was like, really, Lord? Like this message, like I was supposed to see angels and nothing's happening and I, I'm feeling the presence. And I, 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 okay, then I go back into the service. And, of course, he wins the fight. I didn't win. I go back into the service, and the, the power of God came so mightily in all of us. Like, that, that service was like Rivergate Church. Not There was two churches, but Rivergate Church was felt the power of God and the power of God. Can you guys remember? And it was amazing. Then I ended up ministering to my friend's daughter, Lena, and the Lord gave me all these prophetic words, and I led her into inner healing and it was just beautiful again the lord i was like this 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 child that was catching a fit right and the lord still graced me to minister to somebody in that condition so i want to tell you guys that the lord will use you in times where you don't feel like doing it many times many times i have been in that place where i didn't feel like doing it you know and that's when he'll ask you, hey, and he'll, he'll woo through you, even if you're going through a mess. You don't need to be shiny. As a matter of fact, he likes it when you're not. All right. So tw- I want to make some pointers here. 2020, I get through that season. Praise the Lord. Really hard season for me. And if you could imagine me having that kind of like hasty condemnation, I'm going to, you know, condemn everybody in my household as well. Because it wasn't just for the church. Just use your imagination for that one. 2021. At the, oh no, at the end of 2019, in the middle of all that, because all that's happening, I, I really feel like I, I told my husband, listen, nothing's happening with our finances. And I think this is God telling us we need to move to South Carolina. And we made the decision to move and to leave. And, um, it was a matter of, I didn't really hear from God. It was just, a, I was tired. Our finances, our marriage, our, our everything. I was just tired. I was like, look, I just want to go, you know. So at the end of that year, 2019, again, we had a conference. Why am I telling you about this conference? Pay attention. I went, we went to a conference that our pastors put together. I remember Bill Vanderbush came. The Grace Upon Grace Upon Grace Conference. Oof. Man, the conference that some other people didn't want. I won't mention names, but that's okay. But that conference blessed us. Oh, my gosh. 
I think that was in October, and then in November, and then I'm almost about to make the decision and press and like press on the gas for us to leave. And so was Jose. Something else was happening. The Lord had other plans. At this point, um, things kind of like start turning around for Jose because he started a business also in the midst of all that. He lost his job. I went into real estate. I had to help out, and we were trying to, you know, do whatever we can do to make ends meet and pay the bills. Jose decided he lost his job, and he made the biggest decision he could make, and is to be self-employed and to birth um, Resurrection Air, right? By the way, if you have air problems, Resurrection Air is 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 is, is your place to go. So, it, so he he it was painful to birth that and. And wonderful at the same time because um, it's kind of like what the Lord birthed for us. And the name, the way the name came and all that, it has this, and I don't want to get caught up there, but everything has a reason, right? It wasn't just called Resurrection Air for no reason. But the Lord started to bless us. And in 2019, one of the blessings that came out of that was that he birthed that. He birthed the business. It started to... Before the blessings came for the for the business, one of the things that happened was that the Lord gave me a word. And you know what he called me? He called me. He he said to me when I was with, with him that I carry breakthrough. Okay? And my life did not look like breakthrough, I promise you. My life, we, our finances and everything that was happening was did not look like breakthrough. But he told me that. And I believed it. I mean. I believed it. I, I believed it. So I told Jose, you know, to the, November of 2019 came after that conference, and that's when the Lord spoke to me about my place in then River Gate Church and now in Canos Church. And he gave me a dream that forever changed my life because I think it was a dream for me where, to really establish and give me clarity on my path that I was walking and also um, – I believe it was it was a blessing for the church, and we went through that process. And in 2019, a prophetic words came to me. Then we went into the ending of 2019. Pastor Kayla invites me to kind of co-teach with her again. Not such a great idea. Not because I was in that that season, but because I was so encountered by the Lord that I barely got any words out. But it was beautiful because I had that dream and that vision. They kind of like gave clarity to many things that will happen later, right? And then, and, and it has to do with the birthing of their dream, which is now in Countess Church. And for the Lord to use me for that, right? Um, was so beautiful for me. And, and he also said to me and to Thelma that we were the pillars, that we were the errands to the pastors. And that, my friend, you don't take lightly. For someone who felt like I didn't have a purpose, for someone who felt like my life was a mess, in between all that, many things were happening, but I wasn't really paying attention. I was just in the moment, right? You do your day to day. So 2020, here's what happens. The pastor's birth in Canvas Church yeah, COVID happened, but we're not going to mention that. COVID happens, but we still birth and Encounters Church. No one in Encounters Church catches the disease. Praise the Lord Jesus. You guys should be praising. Guess what else happens? I get bathroom duties. I get floor duties. That also happens, my friend. Guess what also happens? The increase of the presence of God in Encounters Church goes up the roof. Yes. Off, the roof. Yes. Off the roof. Guess what else happened? We we still get to have service. We were still having service when people were not having service. Praise the Lord. Right? <laughs> and then get us, get, what else happens? Our business starts to prosper. We no longer live paycheck to paycheck, my friends. We are givers. We are the head and not the tail. Yes. 
And that happens. What else happens? <laughs> in, to, in December, well, in December, elections happen. <laughs> uh, November elections happen, but the whole 2020 was the year of elections. The spirit of, of that was out, right? You know, what do you call that spirit? This, the, the election spirit, whatever that spirit is. Huh? The political spirit, there it is. It was out. And that spirit hit me in my household, because I'll be very candid. It hit us. We were going through some disagreements in our household. And I'm not ashamed to say it, to say the least. And that was okay, because we agreed to disagree. But there was many times. One of the things that I want to say about our pastors, one of the things that happened in that season was that I was very frustrated with my husband because he didn't want to see things my way. Right? You wouldn't suspect that, right? But yeah, he didn't want to. How dare him, right? Like, why not? But no, he, he had his, his own opinions and I, and you know, I learned to honor that, to disagree, right? I learned to agree to disagree. But in those many moments, like, man, oh, it's a whole year of election, guys. And think about all that, all the noise that was happening, all the fear of the COVID, all that whole mess. It was, it was a very prosecuting, intense, uh, hard year for, for everyone, I think, and especially for us. And Jose and I were going through something. But I remember calling Pastor Andre and kind of like going to my pastors, because that's what you do. When you're going through something, you go to the, your pastors. You go to those you trust. You don't hang on, on to things. That's why they're here. That's why we are here. So I did just that, and I went to him. And I and Pastor Andre, I said, you know, Pastor Andre, you know, I started sharing with him, and I was trying to get him on my side, right? I was trying to see, let him see things my way. I am a Republican. Not afraid of saying that. It's okay. That doesn't matter anyway. This is king, the, Jesus' kingdom, right? Not, not anybody else's. But you know, we're going through a process, and then he, he gives me, <laughs> he gives me so much wisdom and so much love. And there, and he talks about Jose in a way that only men can talk about each other, right? A man, a person who loves you, a person who honors you. And when he talks about Jose to me, I'm left in awe. Because I'm thinking that he was going to say, oh, well, you know. No, he, he started telling me. He started seeing Jose in ways that in that moment I couldn't see him. And that encouraged me because it really opened uh, me to see him and trust him in ways that, that, that if that would not happen, I wouldn't be able to trust him. Because he loved my husband. He loved us together. And he was able to see when I wasn't able to see. In my blind spots, he was able to shine light. And that blessed me. And I thank you for that. I really do. And I don't think my husband knows that, but I, you know now. That's what happened. <laughs> it's kind of what happened. But it was a blessing. It was a blessing. He he had insight, man, insight that I just didn't know, right? So I want to, what time? What's my time? I have a little time. I'm very over. Oh, okay. So I want to just lead you, of course. I want to lead you into the fruit of all this. And keep keep in, keep in mind that the process. The fruit of all this is that my marriage is restored. Hallelujah. The fruit of all this is that today I love my husband in ways that you cannot, I couldn't think or imagine. Right? That's kind of part of his prayer. I love you in ways that only Jesus could make me love you. I love you in ways that no one else would love you. And that was birthed out of my time with Jesus and my struggles. And that was also birthed from you hanging on and loving me back. And I thank you for that. Our finances is restored. My daughter Crystal, which I kind of left it out of here, but she was she was fruit of this the church. She came and she got impacted, and she got whole. She was born again, Holy Spirit filled. Not only that, 
She got on fire for Jesus. Not only that, my grandchildren are being raised in Christ. It's beautiful. Not only that, my son has turned around. He got matured, and he's here now. And my son grew up, and healing starts to happen, right? The other thing that happened, I completely, I was kind of put in charge of destiny finders. This time it wasn't by accident. (laughs) It wasn't by default. But I say yes. And then I let, I, I mean, I first did Destiny Finder, and, and because of the pastors, you know, their investment in us, I found out truly, I took it very seriously. I wanted to know what were my giftings, what was I called for. I took it seriously. I put my time, I put my sweat. I did the course. I did more above and beyond, and I got a lot from it. So much so, I started leading a Destiny Finder course. And from here came five beautiful ladies. Actually, six now because Carol's in it. She's my six, my six, my, my six. From there, I started discipling, pastoring, mentoring six ladies, and this is where I really get a turnaround. Why? Because I realized here, <laughs> two years, two and a half years, I don't know, I lost count. It was painful. So much time. Painful because I started to know these ladies and I started to know what they're going through. I started to walk with them. I started to make it about them. I started to see that it's never been about me. It's always been about them. It's always been about others. So my perspective and my heart starts to change from self to others. That's when the magic happens. That's when the glory happens. That is beautiful. Okay, that's when the power comes, the anointing comes, the grace comes, the all the accolades come because that's what happens when you know when when your heart is right and posture and you start really aligning with the heart of God, everything else is abundant to you. And that and that that started to happen. I started doing deliverance, hallelujah. And I increased in my faith in ways that I can't even tell you. I increased in the the wisdom in my counseling, in discipling, increased to levels that leave me in awe sometimes. The stuff that comes out of my mouth, I will know it's not me. It is the Holy Spirit. And this time, I know who he is. I increased in the healing anointed. I increased in my prophetic words. I increased in the answer of my prayers. When When I pray, my expectations... I have no expect. The expectation is that it's going to be answer. And guess what happens? It's answer. <laughs> so much so that we, I, I'll do this a little bit. I know I got to go. But this, uh, this city group, I was praying and I asked for prayer and someone had a really back ache. And what happened was she said, can you pray for my back? What level? Seven. I said, okay. I skipped over to the next person. We pray for the next person. I had somebody pray for that person. The Lord said to me, the pain is gone from, from, it was Lena. And I said, okay, Lord. And I said, Lena, how's your pain? She's like, what pain? The pain is gone. So even without me even praying, the anointing and the presence and the power was so present that she got healed and I didn't even pray. That's part of that increase. That's part of that process. Hallelujah. Okay. What else happens? July 15, Royal Garden is birth. July 15, Mary, she births. Royal Gardens. We have walked, we have talked numerous hours. Mary, you were probably the longest I would talk to. Sometimes you would have me for hours. But you know, you birthed it. And the thing that gets me is that, you know, the Lord says that be fruitful and multiply. The sacrifice. I never thought about the sacrifice. But there was so much sacrifice. 
And that, and I, I, the reason why I know that is because when I talked to Thelma the day after, she reminded me, you know, this is part of your stuff. I was like, oh yeah, it is. She brought, I was so excited. And why am I excited? I am excited for the women and the young ladies that the Lord has given you in their future. In the way they're going to walk royally. The way they're going to walk in the garden. The way they are going to really be the, the ones that change this, 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 um, culture. The ones that are going to be free. The one that's going to spread the gospel to places that you and I can't go. That Pastor Kayla and Pastor Arna can't go. I am so excited for that. That was birthed out of my process. The last of that, I'm here. And it's me sharing with you today. And what I want to mention is that and now I want you to close your eyes. If you can play some music a little louder, because I want to minister to you, but just where you are. Thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are here. Lord, I thank you that right now you are just igniting fire. You're touching hearts. This is ministry time right now. You're touching hearts, everyone, including my pastors. I thank you that the Lord gave me a prophetic word when I was traveling. In July, this July, I traveled four times. The number four is a prophetic number that the Lord speaks to me through. It's not by accident. In those four, in those four flights, I had tremendous turbulence to the point that I had the conversation with the Lord. Am I going to die again? Like what's happening? But I made it to the other side. And the Lord is saying to you guys right now, the turbulence in your life, the turbulence in the in the pro, in your process in your life, I believe, and I just want to decree and declare that over you. Whatever has been so hard for you to walk through, the times that you've been waiting, the the sons, the daughters that you're waiting for to come to Christ, the finances that you're ready to turn around. You and your walk with God. God, like, when am I going to finally see, you know, the breakthrough, the power, the miracles, the signs, the wonders, the, the deliverance, the, the, the people change, revival, fire. When am I finally going to see that, Lord? When am I going to see the conflict gone? When am I going to see the accusations, the mocking? When are the time, when, when am I going to stop, you know, all, all, all this time that I give to you, Father, when is it going to be redeemed? When is the frustration going to stop? When the jealousy is going to stop because you deal with jealousy. You are misunderstood. You are blamed. You are threatened. You, you find resistance even in your family, with your friends. You lose friends <laughs> along the way. Many tears, many, many, many tears. Long hours. Thank you, Lord. All that to say, sacrifice. Salvation is free. But walking with Jesus and really growing and being part of the advancing of his kingdom, when you're doing it, it doesn't look like you're doing much. But it requires many yeses. The total of the time is 18 years. From 33 and I'm 51. 33 long years. If you would ask me that I would be standing here. Say no because I just didn't see it. But many yeses brought me here. I want to speak to your process. Your process, my friend. I speak breakthrough. In the places where there's turbulence, I say be still and know that he is God. I speak a fresh refreshing in your body, your soul, your spirit. And above all, I want to release fire, hunger, the hunger of the Lord. Upon you for the yeses. Walking with Jesus looks like something. He didn't die, like Pastor Killer said, for you to go home and read scriptures only. 
he paid a really heavy price. So today, Lord, every wounded heart, every, every heart, every person is dealing with addiction, confusion, lies, break, be set free like that song said, freedom. I speak freedom over you now in the name of Jesus. Freedom. Be free. And I just want to instill the hunger and release the hunger of expectation. As you walk and as you say yes, you continue to say yes. He will meet you there and you will see the increase upon your life. Just the way Pastor Kayla and Andre has. And I have. And Thelma has. And this house has. I thank you, Lord. And Lord, I, I pray that this will not be condemnation on anyone, Lord. This is an invitation to understand we're not babies anymore. We're not just doing church. We're here for a reason. We have the love of God, the presence of God, the breakthrough of God, the hand of God, the protection of God. We know it. Look at what just happened in 2020. And we are all here. Our families are good. Because of what he's done in the cross. So I want to invite you and challenge you and also encourage you for the bigger yes in your life. And encourage you in your process. You, like I was told once, once when I was feeling really down by my pastor, we are going somewhere, my friends. And I want to tell you all, we are going somewhere, my friends. As I look out, this place is filled so much so that we won't be here too long. In Jesus' name, God has big things for us and for you. So I want to thank you for your time. And if anybody needs prayer, of course, we can pray for you. But I want you to soak in on this, your process. It's not in vain, my friend. It's not in vain. Thank you, Lord. You know, one more thing that I gained from this process. I gained a family, a husband restoration in my house, a new family, a nana, a papa, terrific friends, a twin sister. Who I adore are confident, beautiful people. Everyone different, but also beautiful. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Marisol. That's awesome. Give her a hand. That's awesome, right? Process. So good. So good. So good. Glad you got to hear a bit of a story. Just connect our hearts with heaven. Man, you, you, the, the thing I liked about it is like, you, Kayla and I know this because it happens all the time. You probably don't know it. When people come to church all the time, they're smiling, they're happy, they wave, they jump, they sing hallelujah. And then they pick up the phone on Monday and they call. And say, Pastor Andre, Pastor Kayla, let me tell you what's really happening. I know it's jumping and screaming, but let me tell you what's happened. Everything is break loose, right? Right? H E double L Maxwell Hobby Sticks has broken loose. And we walk through this process and we say, but come back next week because God's going to meet you again next week. They come back and they show up and God meets them next week. And, And so that's part of the beauty of the broken vessels that we are, that we get to see the greatness and the beauty of God reflecting in all of us. Right, and so that's that was so vulnerable. I just thank God for you. That's so awesome, Jose. Man, you are right with me. You always see. I, you owe me one. Right? <laughs> that's so awesome, awesome. So if <laughs> come on, Jesus, it was just such a glory in the room, huh? Thank you, Jesus. So, Father, we just engage you again. We we thank you that we could be vulnerable in front of you. 
that you could connect with us. So if you need prayer for anything, come on up. But just, if you want to take a moment to soak, that's great. If you want to connect here, that's awesome. And we just love you, Lord. We thank you, oh God, for that. You know, the, the, the one thing that I remember when she was talking about, and that broke me in the service, the servant, she said, there was a fork in the road one time. And you may be having your fork in the road at some point. There's a fork in the road, as she said, I either had to make the decision to go with the glitz and the glamour of ministry, or I had to make the decision to go after God with everything that's inside of me. And that's the position of making. That's the yes you're seeing. That's the yes that you get to see. And we've all had to say that yes. I remember that same, what I mean, she talking about with Gary Oates in that meeting. I, I remember clearly, Gary's message was really simple. But he says, all I want to do is I just want to ask you if you want to say yes to Jesus. I remember Frank was one of the guys. He said, there were like six people that went up. He's like, listen, don't make this a big deal. Don't, don't make this. If you don't want to say yes, sit down. And the way how Gary said it, it was so like, wow, I'm not sure if I want to say yes to Jesus. I see Frank go up there and he says, I'm saying yes to Jesus. And it was so powerful to see that. And we all have that part in our lives where we, we have to say yes to him. And I encourage you to say that yes to Jesus. Say that yes again to him. Say that yes. Because it is in the saying of that yes is where you begin to experience your breakthrough. Yes, you've said yes to making Jesus the Lord of your life. But there are layers and measures of this, and this layers and measures of yes creates greater and greater revelation and breakthrough in your heart. So just say yes. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We say yeah. We say yeah. We say yes to you, Lord. We say yes to you, Jesus. We say yes. Yes, God. I encourage you to say yes. I remember a couple of years ago when Melody was preaching, she said, you could say a no to a thousand things. Just say yes to Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Say yes.
as you say yes, you get more revelation. As you say yes, you get to experience a different aspect of who God is. He is inexhaustible. And your yes brings more of the resources of heaven into focus in your life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. We bless you. Yes, God. Thank you, Zoom audience. If you want to stay in, stay at the altar. The altar is open. It's never closed. It's like a 7-Eleven altar. All right. If you want a team that's breaking down, feel free to go help with the breakdown. If you want to stay and connect with Jesus, that's fine. God bless you.